All right, we are into the game of Copenhagen Wolves versus Fnatic. Cast an Inlux band out. As basically, we see a lot of targeted bands towards the mid lane. I fully expect to see champions like Kale and Nidalee band out, as they're really annoying at the moment, and people really don't want to see them played. They just bring so much to a team, it can really turn around most situations, as they're some of the most powerful champions in the game, and they can really just deal a death blow to many cha um, champions just with their poke alone. We won't actually be able to see the final two bands, as it is a Riot Spectator bug, and it's incredibly annoying. It's painfully annoying, as it, you really want to see the last two bands. I fully expect them to be something like Shen and Elise, as those two champions really just bring a lot to a team. Could be Twisted Fate as well. And I fully expect Fnatic to pick up the one champion that wasn't mentioned in that last sentence. As they could easily grab several good champions at this point. Copenhagen Wolves will have first pick here. As they're likely to pick up Shen or Twisted Fate if they weren't banned out. Zin Zhao is another good opportunity. Could be Jarvan as well, as that seems to be a very popular pick at this tournament patch. And I definitely think it's going to be one of the junglers at the moment. I don't think they want to give away their mid lane yet, or their top lane. As that's just a little too much information this early, and it can be easily counterpicked, depending upon what's available in the pool still. But with Zinzao picked up by Copenhagen Wolves, that gives them a very solid jungler with the ability to initiate from a long distance. He has a pretty good CC, and he's very good, viable all game long. It's his ability to just get on that back line and really annoy the AD carry, and possibly even kill him if he gets ahead. And yeah, Shen Volibear right away by Fnatic. Volibear, a really popular champion in the EU scene. Because his jungle ganks are basically some of the strongest in the game, he can get around wards with his high speed, and you take Shen for the ultimate as Shen just turns those ganks around. It's going to be really funny seeing Volibear running through the enemy lines, then Shen popping out at the back end for a really nice taunt and positioning in team fights. And I definitely think Fnatic's going to use that combo fairly effectively, as Volibear is going to be focused in these team fights just to prevent him from getting that back line and getting on the carries before they get blown up. Copenhagen here will likely pick up their support and one of their solo lanes, likely top at this point, as we know what Fnatic's going to be running in their top lane and jungle already. And you can f pick your top lane fairly safely. Singe would be a good choice. Sona also a really strong poke champion. And Singe does have several good ways of shutting Shin down by just keeping the lane pushed. And if Shin wants to leave to use his ultimate, Singe is going to take one, possibly even two towers or force your jungler up there. And Singe is just a really good, soft counter to Shen. Leona and Misfortune are picked up by Fnatic, going for a very strong kill lane in the bottom. And that will synergize very well with Volibear. As Leona can lock them down, allow Volibear to run up there, land his knockback, and they can just destroy anyone in that bottom lane from a very long distance. Misfortune also brings great early and mid-game power. as her ability to roam around the map, get in and out of trades effectively is one of the best in the game in that bottom lane and it means they're going to have a very hard time with whoever Copenhagen Wolves picks up for their AD carry. I fully expect them to pick something like an Ezreal here just to be very safe again in that bottom lane and it would allow them for a very strong 2v1 lane should they choose to do so. Though I'm not sure it's such a great idea to try and 2v1 on Copenhagen's side and it will be a Caitlyn, another very safe pick. Elise also may just slip very far down in the draft. She'll likely be in the mid lane here, as that'll be a very interesting lane matchup with whoever Fnatic decide to pick. Their options are fairly limited, as we can see by the bands. They're pretty much all targeted at XPK in the mid lane, and that's definitely going to be a very interesting matchup with whoever they decide to pick. Something like an Ari would be a good choice. We've seen Cassiopeia come out on the NA scene a few times, and that'd be a very good choice here as there are a lot of short range champions with the exception of Caitlyn on Copenhagen. Karthus is also in the pool I believe and I definitely think they have enough CC so they're going to want some damage and it will be Katarina likely going for a bit more of a damage focused build instead of the attack or tanky 
kind of a little bit of offense build. And it's going to be a good matchup. Though I do think Elise wins that matchup fairly heavily. As Elise just has the ranged advantage and has a bit more poke than Katarina. Even though Katarina has some poke, it's nothing compared to what Elise can bring out. And it's definitely going to be a very interesting game here. Lots of teleports going to be coming out on Fnatic. So they're going to be able to move around the map and really dominate this mid game. They've got teleports coming out in both their jungler and mid laner. Shin has his natural teleport. And I think they're going to focus a lot of their efforts down bottom onto Misfortune and Leona. As that lane sets up basically everything. As it's going to be a really hard time for Copenhagen to actually get in there. The one advantage they do have is they have, Shin, um, they have Singed. Who can run past towers, split push very effectively. And there's not going to be a good way to kill him outside of getting Misfortune very strong. If this goes late and Singe gets tanky enough, he could possibly just run around 5v1 the enemy team. Just by being super tanky and annoying. In addition to that, is going to have a very easy time getting back onto Misfortune. As there's not a whole lot of disruption for him. As Chen Volleybear want to get on the back line. And Leona is going to try and get on that back line as well. And disrupt it. Disrupt the big damage coming out of Caitlyn, Sona, and even Elise. As those champions are fairly squishy unless they build for tankiness. They don't have that natural tankiness of someone like Leona. And it's going to be who can get to the back line faster in a lot of these team fights. In addition to that, I definitely think we're going to see a lot of split push coming out of Fnatic. They have a lot of teleports. They have Shen. So they're not going to be taking these large 5v5 fights. Unless they absolutely have to or are super far ahead. They're going to do a lot of 2v2s, 2v3 fights. Where they might not have an advantage in the fight. But they can bring in support and easily turn that into a 4v2, 4v3 fight. Where the enemy team just gets caught off with those summoner abilities. Even in this high level of play. Teams get caught off rather often by a very well placed teleport. Or a well placed Shin ultimate. When they just go a little too deep. Or they have someone like Volibear teleporting behind the enemy lines. Especially with multiple teleport sources. If it's only one teleport source, they usually can keep track of it. But keeping track of both Volibear and Katarina's teleport, in addition to the Shin ultimate, is going to be a real pain in the rear, as one of them should be up at virtually all times. Unless they really secure a big team fight win on the side of Fnatic. And I definitely think it's Fnatic's game to lose with how they structure their lineup. Copenhagen's going to have a very hard time dealing with the split push coming out of Shin. And it's they're going to have Singe to try and help out, but Singe really needs to be on the front lines, applying pressure, and making sure the AD carries can't get a lot of damage on the Fnatic side of things. As Singe just has a lot of uh, good abilities that can cause him to run to the back line very quickly. And finally into the game, as it looks like Fnatic's going to be grouping up, trying to place that fairly deep ward near red buff. That's been a fairly standard ward throughout the entire tournament on the European side of things. But I think Copenhagen has this, is going to have send someone there just to kind of protect them. Looks like Shen is going to set up for the 2v1 lane down bottom. As we do see Fnatic heading up top, they're likely going to be taking the double golems, then doing the standard lane swap. Shen going to be trying to go in fairly deep. But Sona is there to block him off. Zen Zhao is in the area. And it's a very wise decision. But we are going to see Fnatic coming in here as a full five man. And they're going to hope someone doesn't get caught, caught out. And Zen Zhao is in a lot of trouble. As Shin does land a few attacks. And he does have his taunt available should he choose to do so. But Zen Zhao will flash. And a very big win there by Fnatic. Taking what should have been nothing. And getting the jungler's flash. Which will really hurt those early game ganks. And it will really hurt if... Copenhagen wanted to try that early level 2, level 3 gank that most teams are known for on the bottom lane in that 2v1 spot. Singe is going to have a very hard time against Misfortune and Leona. As every time Singe comes up to last hit, Leona can land out the stun or root. And Misfortune will be able to land a few attacks on him. And Singe won't also have the healing debuff on him starting at probably level 2 or 3. As that will negate a lot of the effects of his potions. Zen Zhao is going to be starting off with a blue buff. While we do see Volibear likely to start with his own blue buff. Pause does come out. Not sure exactly what the issue is. But we'll see in just a moment. As it's likely a disconnect or just a general bug all around. Hope we don't have to remake the game. 
looks like it's going to be solved fairly quickly. But it's still incredibly annoying. And yeah, it looks like we're back into play already. Definitely liking the live stream of the European scene more than the North American scene. As you can... You see a lot more of the players, kind of how the teams are interacting during these breaks. You see their screens. You don't just see the face cam all the time. This is definitely something that I think the North American scene can improve upon. They also, the European scene had the very nice host at the beginning, and it wasn't just the two commentators sitting there rambling on about virtually nothing. They had the nice, well-dressed host. They did a lot of kind of nice talking, and Singe is in a lot of trouble up top. As Leona does a good bit of damage, and Singe is going to be very far out on level 2. He's already burned his health potion. He's got the crystalline flask, but that's not going to be enough against this lane up top. Leona has several potions. She does have a pink ward still if she chooses to use it. And the lane is definitely going to be Fanatics to lose. As this is free farm for Misfortune. Misfortune scales slightly better than Caitlyn. But Caitlyn does have the ability to defend herself very well. And that's the one reason Caitlyn's been picked so much in the recent weeks. As she doesn't need the protection of her team. While it's nice and it's helpful, she can really defend herself. Sin is in a lot of trouble up top, and uh, we're going to see Shen getting a lot more farm down bottom just due to the nature of his abilities. He has a bit more ranged... He has, she has a ranged ability, I should say. Volleybear going to come up top, likely going to go for this Legank right at level 3, at about the 3 to 3 fifth or 3.30 mark. So when it's going to happen, Sin's just going to lay a poison trail and back up very far. Not wanting to get ganked. He does not have flash. He does have a teleport, should he so choose. Volleybear going to run in here. But Singe does pop the flash. Sin's out there right in time, but he gets exhausted and he's going to go down for first blood. Volleybear biting him off. But we are going to see Leona getting very low, but she was out of tower range. And actually rotated aggro. Singe in a lot of trouble up top. As Volleybear is going to charge, and this is going to be an easy double kill by Fnatic. And yeah, Fnatic is just playing absolutely wonderfully. As Copenhagen Wolves made a real big mistake by not fighting on the towers. Zinzao was just a little late to that lane. And they really need to fight under the towers. At this point in the game, towers do far more than champions do in terms of damage. And that would have easily negated the extra damage. Leona took one or two tower shots, but it was just not enough. As Copenhagen Wolves really just kind of blundered that. What is a fairly standard gank. They could have almost given up the tower. Looks like we're going to have Misfortune and Leona going back very early. Shen gets a nice taunt off, which means Sona's going to take a lot of damage from the tower. Caitlyn's going to take a bit as well, and they will actually be able to take this bottom tower. Almost evening up the gold. And it looks like we are going to have Singe return to the top lane. I don't think they're going to be able to lane swap anytime soon. Singe does have teleport, but Shen is just getting a very big advantage in terms of experience. And gold, as he is up about 10 CS at this point in time. Mid lane's virtually even. Even though Katarina is a bit of a disadvantage at the moment as she's burned off all her consumables so far. While Elise still does have a health potion. Zinzao in the mid lane. Going to be coming up for a gank. Katarina in a bit of trouble. She does not have that ward, but she does have the flash. And is able to get away. Teleport coming in from not sure who. It looks like it was Volibear trying to come in for a counter gank. As that was a pretty good way to just back them off. And if they didn't run away immediately, he would have had a good opportunity to apply some pressure. As I do believe he picked up a refresher on his double buffs with that top gank. Volibear is just such a good champion in terms of ganking power that most teams have decided to ban him out in the European scene. Just due to the fact that he gets really tanky, he has that extra health, so he's deceptively strong early. And that fling back is so incredibly powerful. Looks like we are going to actually have the lane swap coming in as Sona and Caitlyn have done their job down bottom picking up that early tower and equalizing the loss of those two kills almost. Zenzao getting a very deep position here and Chin's going to be in a lot of trouble. He is not level 6 so he can't actually teleport away but Singe is only level 3. Zenzao level 4. Singe will have the not fling and we will have the knockup from Zenzao but Shin will be able to just shadow dash away unless something really good happens from the side of Copenhagen Wolves. It looks like they aren't going to be able to get a gank, even though Shen was in a pretty good spot. Shen is now level 6, which means there's going to be some roaming happening from him. And that will give Shen the advantage and the ability to actually catch up, as he is down 22 CS at the moment.
which is very big at this point in time. Looks like we are going to have a gank up top as Leona jumps in here, getting a nice bit of hit, but Shin misses the Shadow Dash. But the rest of Fnatic is here. Easy double kill by Katarina. Not something you want to see happening. And Katarina will be able to... No, she does not have teleport. She used her teleport to get up top with the ward in the bush. And this will be the tower going down. Fnatic absolutely dominating this early game. Copenhagen Wolves needs to rush for Dragon at this point. It looks to be what they're doing. As they're in a world of trouble. Considering how far down they are in terms of kills. And they've given up a lot to do so. Singe has virtually no farm. But they will be able to pick up a Dragon. And it looks like Fnatic's not going to stop. They're going to grab both of these towers. And allow Shin a lot of free room up top. To just continually split push. And I don't think there's anything that... Copenhagen can do here. Singe can teleport up top, but I don't think it's going to be enough. As you see a Shadow Dash and the full Leona combo coming out into Caitlyn. Caitlyn will be bitten out by Volibear with a quick death. And Copenhagen just does not realize the power of Volibear at this point. It's even the power of Leona as well. As Volibear Leona just does a ridiculous amount of damage in CC. Caitlyn had no chance there, despite getting a decent trap off and a nice knockback. Caitlyn is in a lot of trouble, and Copenhagen is responding slightly down bottom, but I think they're going to be in a bit more trouble, as we do see Katarina rotating down here, with Shen in the area as well. Sin still not level 6, Zen Zhao not 6 as well, as we see everyone but Leona hitting level 6 on the side of Fnatic. Fnatic will be able to steal the blue buff here, and it looks like we are going to have Copenhagen with the response, taking the blue buff of Fnatic. A pretty decent trade there. Though still, Katarina picking up those two kills top is going to be a lot of trouble. Looks like we are going to have the Tear of the Goddess coming out on Delise in addition to a Doran's ring. Very interesting choices. Usually Elise's build a little more tanky. They go something like that early haunting guys, for, then build up the ability power, not go very soft caster heavy build. Singe also going with a tier, and it looks like they are going to play for a very late game on the side of Copenhagen as their early game is really not worked out. We do have Zin Zhao picking up the Madrid's Razor. Caitlyn has opted for the Vampiric Scepter, Duran's Blade, and early Berserker's Greaves. Sona going for the Philosopher's Stone and a Sight Stone very soon. Shen picking up the Duran's Shield and a likely Sunfire Cape. Volibear going for an early Sunfire Cape in addition to the Madrid's Razor. Katarina likely going to be going for that Leandries. As you do see, Misfortune picking up the BF Sword and Double Durant's Blades. In the mid lane, we are going to see Fnatic going for a kill on Elise. As we do see Leona wrapping around. And she will just barely get the range onto Elise. And Elise is very low. And the ultimate by Misfortune will not do enough damage. But Katarina is going to be able to take over the tower and get the reset on Shunpo. Allowing her to escape easily. Down, down up top, we see Volibear soloing Caitlyn. Which is rather depressing. As Volibear should not have the ability to solo Caitlyn. Your AD carry should be able to take out the jungler. But this Caitlyn is just too far behind. And Fnatic has really snowballed this game into a rather massive lead. And this is just the power of Fnatic. They have really been on the ball lately. And are doing a really good job in this tournament. Looks like we do have the Hextech Revolver actually picked up by Katarina. Likely going to be seeing a Gunblade at some point. Which is kind of different as most Katarinas build Warmogs after picking up the Haunting Guys. But still, it's going to be a good build as she is going to be able to snowball very hard at this point. She has three kills already. Highest CS in the game at 83. And her team is not going to be stopping anytime soon. A little bit of lag here from the stream, but everything is okay. As we do see Caitlyn going for an Infinity Edge, having picked up the pickaxe already. Volibear very deep looking to go attack Caitlyn again as soon as she comes out. He's in a good spot to do so, and he doesn't need to worry about doing a whole lot. Singe in a lot of trouble as he does pop Ghost. Shin will not be in the area to Shadow Dash. So he's just a little too far away, and the tower was blocking him out. As it would have meant a very awkward Shadow Dash across it. Volibear kind of come and split push bottom lane, not staying in the jungle very long. I thought he'd wait for Caitlyn to push out, but it didn't look like Caitlyn was going to. And we are going to see the bottom tower going down in favor of Fnatic. Bringing them to about a 5,000 gold lead as soon as it goes down. Looks like Volibear is in a bit of trouble as Elise does come up top. But with that stun miss, we are going to see Shin coming in with his ultimate. And Elise is in a lot of trouble. 
Volibear taking a lot of damage, but a nice Shadow Dash by Shin, and that is a dead Elise. Volibear with his big bite doing a lot of damage. We are going to see Katarina getting a reset onto that Caitlyn, and Singe in a lot of trouble as well as Katarina just continually dives him. I don't think they're going to dive the Tier 3 just yet, as Volibear did have to go back. He was fairly low on health. His passive was not up. And that's just the advantage of these teleports and global strategy coming out of Fnatic. No team likes to play against it. And it looks like we are going to see Volibear teleporting back in. And this will be an inhibitor tower going down. I don't see any way Copenhagen can take it down at this point in time and really defend it. As we do see another tower going down by Fnatic. Fourth tower of the game. And it looks like they are actually going to be able to go fight it. But it's not a very good fight, though. Volibear is getting very low. His passive has proc. Caitlyn with the ultimate will be able to finish him off. No, the passive a little too strong, but singed with the shutdown. A much-needed kill here by Copenhagen, as they are down significantly in terms of gold. And I was honestly surprised Fnatic didn't either back out sooner or just say, go for the tower, we don't care, so they could take the inhibitor later on with their split push. Looks like Sunfire Caves had completed by both Shin and Volibear. Sorcerer's Shoes picked up by Katarina. Misfortune going with that BF sword into Bloodthirster very soon. Leona picking up that Duran shield in addition to the Sight Stone and Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, quick look at the gold graph. It basically shows you what you'd expect. Everyone on Fnatic getting massively ahead considering they picked up several kills on virtually everyone and their entire team's been involved in the game as it's not one lane really snowballing it's been a very good team effort coming out from Fnatic as a lot of teams you'll have one or two people picking up all the kills and assists but this game it's been Katarina and Volibear picking up all the kills but as you look at the assist everyone has been involved in about half of these plays and that's really what you want to see out of a team. A lot of coordination. Zenzao tries to jump in there. Not sure exactly why. As I guess they saw Misfortune top and it was going to be a 5v3. But I'm not sure that's a very good idea at this point. As Fnatic has all their tanky players up here. And Katarina with the ability to snowball. As soon as they get someone low. Looks like we are going to see a bit of a bait out here by Copenhagen. But they will have a ward. And it looks like we are going to have Dragon up. So it looks like there is going to be Katarina jumping in there trying to get some damage. But not able to do a whole lot. Pink Ward placed down and we are going to see Fnatic going for Dragon. Copenhagen does not have an answer for it. They're not in position to take a trade. And without any vision I don't think they could go in there. Looks like we are going to see a Spider thrown out by Elise but it's not going to be enough. As the Spider didn't even really reach them it was just kind of checking. And this is a big win for Fnatic. Picking up even more gold and they've done an absolutely wonderful job of dominating every single lane and rotating around the map 15 minutes in the game they have four towers an 8,000 gold lead and about eight kill lead and they've just dominated every single lane and even in CS they're ahead in virtually every lane with the only losses being misfortune to Caitlyn by 5 CS while we do see Singe down 50 on Shin, and that's really been the story of the game. As that lane swap worked out perfectly for Fnatic, we do see Leona jumping in with a big ultimate, Shin coming in as well, but uh, Shin will actually get in here as Leona does go down for the first death. Shin flashing forward to pick off Elise, and Katarina getting very bold diving the tier 3 tower this early in the game. But that is going to be another tower taken by Fnatic, which means all outer towers have been taken by Fnatic at the 16 minute mark absolute domination by them as they've really done such a good job of rotating around using their global summoners to move around and pick up kills and that's exactly what you want to see out of a coordinated team I'm not sure this would have worked against some of the best in Europe as Copenhagen Wolves is kind of the worst of the best at this point but it's still a very good strategy and something you're going to have to prepare for if you're actually playing against Fnatic they're one of the few teams that like to run this many teleports. A lot of teams like to run the global champions such as Twisted Fate and Shen, and usually the teleport on the top lane, but Fnatic is running teleport on their jungle, 
and mid lane with the addition of Shen. Just that extra layer of global mobility is so important for their style. And they're really just loving the aggression at this point. Warmong soon to be picked up by Shen. We do see Singe going for the Giant's Belt. Xin Zhao just tanking it up with Ruby Crystals at this point. Fnatic looking to go for a blue buff steal as Leona is coming in the area. She does have a Giant's Belt already. Not sure what she's going to build that into, but I don't think it matters. She hasn't even picked up boots yet. Which is another difference in the North American and European scenes. Amer North American scenes, they like to pick up boots very quickly on their supports. While the European scene, I don't think they've picked up boots on their supports ever. It's just kind of one of those interesting things. As you do see Shin getting caught out here, but he is able to shadow dash away. Misfortune Ultimate flies, but she's in a bit of trouble as Singe does come in here. But Teleport coming in by Katarina and Volibear. And they'll arrive at about the same time. And that's going to be a dead singe. Nice Leon ultimate stun singed, and he will go down. And that's just something that catches Copenhagen off guard, those double teleports. Shin is in a bit of trouble. If he had his ultimate, he would go back to base. But it's still down for another 20, 30 seconds or so. We're likely to see an engagement very soon. As that's a beautiful word placed there by Leona, giving her perfect vision of the high ground. And we are going to see Volibear taking a bit of harassment. But we are going to have Misfortune taking down this last tower, and he's going to run forward, but takes a lot of damage from Elise and Caitlyn. And that will mean Fnatic backing up seven towers to just one. Fnatic in a ridiculous lead here, up 9,000 gold and counting. Katarina is going to rotate and push out the mid lane. As we do see Misfortune in a bit of trouble, but as soon as she gets her pass it back, she'll be just fine. Leona sneaking away in that side bush. As if they checked that, she would have been completely gone. Very lucky by her they didn't, and we're really wanting to pick up Misfortune. Zonny's Hourglass likely to be picked up by Katarina next. She could go for a Death Cap, but I think Zonny's would be an excellent choice here. As there's a lot of physical damage coming out on Copenhagen, and that's really their strong point at the moment. As soon as Caitlyn picks up her Infinity Edge, she'll have enough damage to apply pressure to Fnatic. And that's their one chance of coming back, is getting Caitlyn really well farmed, and getting Singed some ar more armor. He doesn't have enough armor to really deal with Fnatic's team at the moment. As most of their damage is physical, with the exception of Katarina. There's a bit of magic damage on both Sin on uh, Shen and Volibear. But not enough to really warrant getting a heavy magic resistance build. Usually something like the aura from an Aegis would be enough. And looks like we are gonna have Fnatic going for Bear, and there is a worth spotting this out. Singe not in position at this point. He does have teleport, but it's going to be very hard. And a nice bait here by Fnatic, as at least Spider will not be able to see them at this point. They have no vision of that area. But I don't think Copenhagen's actually going to challenge them at Baron at this point. And yeah, there's the ward coming out, spotting. Copenhagen running forward. Fnatic in a great position. Spider does come out. Leona ultimate whiffs, but it does catch Elise out of position, and Elise is going to be very taken very low. She will be able to escape with that repel, but we do see Xin Zhao with a nice ultimate knocking Katarina right into his team. And Katarina is going to be able to snowball for a big killing spree here. As you see Shin shadow dashing away, picking up the Singed with only Caitlyn alive. There's nothing Copenhagen can do here. 11,000 gold lead picked up by Fnatic. Katarina having to go back to base because she just got a little too low. Same with Shin. But I don't think it's going to matter. They've just taken the game by horns and Fnatic has really done a great job this game of dominating everywhere on the map and they've used wards to great effect that blue ward was perfect for their setup they actually started Baron saw the ward decided to back up and bait it out and that bait worked they got an inhibitor off of it they picked up even more kills for Katarina and yeah just big leads all around for Fnatic no individual gold lead is huge, but it's one of those, the team gold is where it's at. As Fnatic has just had the ability to take more farm around the map, they've taken virtually every single objective with the exception of they lost their bottom tower first and they lost the first dragon. But when you're taking all these other towers and making sure the enemy doesn't get any farm and can barely leave their base, you're going to be pretty far ahead and win the game because the big story here is look how far behind Singed is over 20 minutes in the game he still hasn't hit 100 CS he's losing out to the jungle of Fnatic 
and he's not even losing the hardest, as we do see Elise losing by about 60 CS at this point. Sanj losing by close to 40. Well, more about 50 at this point. And yeah, it's just been a real stomp by Fnatic. They played this perfectly as a team, rotating around the map. Just using every single opening they could and playing very aggressively. This might get punished by some of the other European teams, but it's something that the North American style could really use. It's just a more use out of teleport. As that's something that just hasn't been done enough on that side of the pond. As teleports have been picked up, but it's usually picked up by global champions just to get back in the lane and apply pressure when their global abilities are on cooldown. But instead, they're using it on their jungler. As Volibear really doesn't need another summoner to get in there. Same thing with Xin Zhao or Jarvan. They really don't need that extra summoner to get into fights or even get out of fights as they have abilities to do so. They can just take teleport, come in from the side or behind them and start something. And I definitely think that's something we're going to see adapting to other teams as well. Just the additional summoners on the junglers. With the exception of Flash and Ghost. Is they really don't need them. Especially if you have someone else that can set up team fights. Like Leona here. She can set up the team fight so Volibear doesn't have to actually initiate. They have Shen who can initiate as well. A good Flash taunt would be perfect right about now. And this is just a siege by Fnatic. They have no real reason to rush the base. They're starving out Copenhagen here. And even though Copenhagen does have the high farmer on the map with Caitlyn, it's not enough as Katarina is about equal to her at this point in time. And it looks like we are going to see Misfortune just doing a little bit of poke every single creep wave. Fnatic not wanting to take a fight under tower, as they could lose a fight under tower. This tower still does a lot of damage. Shin with a nice shadow dash, but it just out of range. And the Infinity Edge and Brawl is Grieve up for Caitlyn. Soon to pick up that zeal. And Misfortune just going to go at the tower. Caitlyn not in position, at least not in position as well. Nice shadow dash onto Zen Zhao, but he does not go down. Sinj getting flinked forward and taking a lot of damage. Volibear getting very low, but a nice Shin ultimate does save him for the moment. Misfortune ultimate comes far for a lot of damage. Shin getting in there, taking out Caitlyn, at least going down. And that should be a good game in favor of Fnatic with only Zin Zhao alive. While the main damage dealers of Fnatic are here still. And that'll be two waves of super minions coming in. And a nicely pushed wave up top. That will be a good game. I don't think Zin Zhao can do anything to stop it. Fnatic just dominating from the word go with that beautiful level 3 gank that Copenhagen just kind of played poorly. And that really started the snowball. Copenhagen did a good job of taking that early tower, and we are going to see the die by Katarina at the end. And that's just how Fnatic plays. They've done a great job of being aggressive and really putting it to Copenhagen that game. Thank you for watching Games Cast by Panda Narill. If you wish to see more, follow my YouTube and Twitch pages below.